What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna do something a little bit different than I have been doing on the channel. We've done a lot of uh, WJ building, um, but today we've got to get some other stuff done. <laughs> the weekend get this got the garage cleaned up uh, which is nice because I've had loads of junk floating around here and I needed to clear it all out after all the stuff we've been doing so that I have some space to work on the Durango because we've got a ton of parts to go on this thing it's time to really uh, focus on the Durango. I would really like this thing done, and I'm not gonna tell you for what yet, um, but there's an event coming up. Um, it's about two months away. Uh, that is a very short period of time to try to get all of this work done, um, but I'm feeling good about it. I think, I think we can make it happen, um, and uh, we just need to focus on it. So, uh, a lot of stuff to get done in here still. Um, but it's not crazy. It's possible. Anything's possible. I mean, I made the uh, Grand Cherokee happen pretty quickly for what it was, and so I feel confident in this. But we needed to clean the entire work area up, and that said, um, there's other things that I do that uh, I haven't really shared a whole lot with you guys, but um, I do buy and sell vehicles, um, um, and we picked up this pretty sweet 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport. Got a little bit of a lift kit to it already. Fox shocks, uh, 35 inch mud terrains, 18 inch wheels, um, decent front bumper, rigid, rigid light bar. It's uh, obviously an angry Jeep. It's got that uh, the grumpy grill. Um, but the one thing that this thing has that is very common in these. So the 3.6 uh, Pentastar motor, I think. I may be wrong, but I think it came out in 2011, um, but it's used in a ton of stuff. So it's not just used in the Wrangler, um, but it's used in a lot of Jeep platforms, Chrysler, uh, just a load of vehicles. It's a very common motor. I think the key's in it. It's a very common motor, used in a lot of different stuff. Um, but there is one thing that tends to go on with these, and we're gonna show you real quick now. That is this tick. So you can hear the tick. And uh, that can be a couple of things. I mean, it's typically one thing. It's uh, the rockers and uh, the lifters tapping and it can do a couple of different things but it can wear the cam uh, in this uh, so we're gonna load this thing up I'm actually gonna take it over to a fellow that I know uh, that does a lot of this type of stuff I want to make sure I get it to somebody who's actually gonna run through the work um, and then back it up too so I don't have time to do absolutely everything so we want to take it to somebody who's gonna be able to help me out with this a little bit um, and get it all taken care of. So um, these are awesome motors. Uh, I really like them. Um, always super reliable, but that is one thing that goes on with these um, that's kind of gone on over the years. So uh, we're going to take this thing in today, uh, drop that off, get it checked out. Then we're going to get back and uh, clean up the uh, Dodge uh, Power Wagon that I picked up. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but uh, I, I own this truck. I bought it back in 2015. Um, owned it for a couple of years. It kind of just sat around while I was working on other things um, and didn't have time for it, but I had picked up a 12L for it. I was going to do this swap with it. Um, I ended up moving you know, to the east side of the state, and with all the moving going on, I wasn't going to drag the truck with me and the 12 valve and everything else that I had to bring with me anyways. So the truck got sold to a fella uh, over on the Olympic Peninsula in uh, on the west side of Washington State. And we went over there and picked it up. He hit me up and just said, hey, same thing. He hadn't had a chance to really do much to it. Um, it's got a new carburetor on it. He had picked up some tires for it. Uh, things like that, but he just hadn't had a lot of time to work on it and said, hey, do you, do you want it back? And so I bought it back from him for, we're going to get that thing cleaned up and uh, it runs, it drives, the brakes work great, the motor runs, um, it's got a 400 V8 in it. Um, it's pretty much a factory truck, but what's really cool about it, it's the Adventurer and it's a club cab and I really like it. I just think it's a really cool truck. So um, we're going to get that going again. 
I'll, I'll show you uh, after it's cleaned up a little bit. I've thought about doing some stuff to it. Uh, you know, it would be cool to get it on a, on a little bit of a lift, mostly because the springs on it in the front in particular, uh, they're kind of unsprung. You can kind of see them de-arched a little bit. Um, and I think it would look really good on like, there's a four inch rough country lift out there for it. Um, I know far from stock, uh, they make some uh, steering stuff for it. Um, it would be cool to do it. I think after uh, kind of sitting on it a little bit and thinking about it over the last week since I've had it, um, I just, I don't want to tackle that. I'd like to get this thing done. And uh, like I said, there's an event coming up that I'd really like to go to. Again, I'm not going to tell you what it is right now because I'm not positive that I can do it. I think it's a huge undertaking, so I don't want to disappoint anybody. Um, but I really want to focus on the Durango, but we've got a lot of other stuff to do. So we're going to take this Wrangler, we're going to go drop that off today. Uh, we're going to clean up the Dodge uh, 76 Power Wagon and uh, get that thing uh, listed and uh, see what else we can knock out today. But that's where we're going to start, so appreciate you checking this out and uh, let's go see what we can get done. Low fuel. Of course, there's low fuel. This is thirty dollars a gallon. To share one thing with you and uh you know this isn't anything that i get paid for so um i just wanted to share it with you but max straps these things are amazing now you know i had these laying around uh typical straps with this type of a latch um and i did i did use these actually so i've got this um but one of the things that happened was, uh, you know, I've got all that stuff already, right? I've got the lifting straps, I've got, uh, well, I've got these D rings or shackles, um, and, uh, and I already had the, the tie down, so I thought, well, I'll just use that stuff. And yeah, it's a lot of excess, um, a lot of excess strap and things like that. But I actually snapped two of them, and very quickly, and then I replaced them. Uh, and got some other, basically the same thing, um, while I was driving across the country with the WJ and going down and up hills and things like that and moving around. The other thing that happens is those little hooks, they detach themselves, they come unhooked. Um, so I snapped two of these uh, and you know, the working load on this, it's these types of straps. And the working load is, uh, yeah, 3,335 pounds. Um, but uh, snapped two of them, replaced them, and then one of them came unhitched because the tension, uh, even though it was strapped as hard as I could get it, the, the tension eventually went out and it, it released. So it's crazy. Um, I finally said, screw it. I'm gonna get uh, some decent straps. Um, so I picked up Max, and man, these things are just awesome. They've, they've done a great job designing this. Um, so the hook is right here at the end of the, the uh, buckle itself hooks right to your d-ring um, a lot less extra strap i usually wind this up but i'm not going very far today so i just tied it like this um, it's easy i'll show you in the back here but these axle straps make it super easy to hook it up and go i'm towing different things at different times so there's lots of different wheel bases there's different things i have going on but these axle straps just make it so easy and what i love too is that these hooks they all have this release so even if you lose tension on something it's not just gonna let go um, and then like at the back here these are a little bit longer than they are in the front so instead of tying them up I do a little loop and we're good to go but there's barely enough there to even do that so um, man yeah I just had to share that max straps you know I think I mean I paid full retail again they didn't help me out with any of that but uh, paid full retail I think 
man, I don't even know, 265, something like that, I think is about what I paid for those. So worth it when you think about, you know, even if you pay 40 bucks per strap, you buy four of these straps. Um, this just does not work. And look at the wear and tear in this already. It's just not what they're built for. Um, you know, if you're tying down cargo, I guess, on a trailer or something like that, they're fine. Um, but not only do the straps work awesome, they come with these awesome little uh, Velcro leashes to keep everything contained. They go right back in the bag and good to go. So yeah, if you're if you're uh, hauling anything on a trailer ever, or you've got your Jeep or whatever, way better to invest in these things. Um, they're just killer and it makes hooking everything up super easy. So just had to share that. So we just dropped the Jeep off and uh, headed back. We're gonna do a little bit of work on that Dodge uh, Power Wagon this afternoon. Um, I'll give you a little update when I hear a little bit more back on the Jeep. Um, like I said, you know, this is a pretty common issue. The Pentastar 3.6 liter V6 has been in these Jeeps. It's been in a lot of different Chrysler models for a long time. It's a great motor. Um, but for whatever reason, this is something that happens uh, regularly, is that ticking noise. Um, it's the rockers, the lifters, uh, and hopefully, and, and again, I'll let you know what I find out on this one, um, but sometimes, depending on how long you let it go for, uh, once you start hearing that ticking, it can be your camshaft as well. So. Uh, hopefully we don't have a camshaft issue. Hopefully it hasn't gone on that long and we can get this thing repaired and it's pretty straightforward. Um, but uh, we'll see. So got a couple of guys that helped me out with that stuff. They've done the job dozens of times. So a lot easier for me to drop it off with somebody, let them tackle that so I can focus on some of the other stuff we got going on. So we'll get the Dodge uh, kind of polished up and uh, see how it looks once everything's out of it. And uh, we get some of the parts uh, wrangled together. Uh, he's got a fair amount of stuff that was in the Dodge. Uh, that, that came with it so I just kind of want to collect everything see what we have and uh, you know honestly a lot of times when you go through and clean something up it also helps you to see what needs to be repaired especially in something older like that so I know that there's a few spots that would need to be patched in the floor in terms of uh, rust um, but other than that it's a super clean truck so we'll take a look at it kind of see what some of the things are that it's gonna need um, and I would love your input let me know what you think do you like uh, you know something Something that's an older build and something that we can do some stuff too. Would you guys be into that? Uh, there's a couple of good lift kit lift kits out there um, that would work well with it, but uh, do I want to do all that stuff right now? I'm not really sure. So like I said, we just kind of need to see what it really needs um, and if I feel like adding this to uh, the project list or if we just need to sell it and move on and uh, do something else. So really want to focus on the Durango. Uh, like I said, there's a there's an event coming up and I'd really like to try to get to that, but it's going to take a lot of work and getting that stuff done. Enough talking. Let me get some food. Let's head back to the house. Let's get this thing cleaned up and see what we need to do with it. So, clean this thing up. It's looking really good. Um, gone through a couple of things. Just apologize for the background noise. There's some traffic where I'm at, but uh, it cleaned up really nicely. The truck looks great. Let me flip this around here.
I really like the uh, old school jump seats in the back. It's just a really cool truck. Um, so it cleaned up really nice. The thing starts up and runs well. A couple of things that uh, I've noticed with this truck, um, floorboards have some rot in it. And I think that is because, um, and you're not gonna be able to see it real well, but uh, when I washed it, I could kind of see the seal on the window uh, is, is actually, it's pulled back a little bit here. Um, so it's allowing water to leak in. The problem is, is the uh, sound deadening or the uh, insulation that's in between it that gets wet and then it just sits on the floor. And so that's gotta be replaced. The good thing is, is that they make panels for this, uh, the floor pans for it, and uh, it, it would make it pretty easy to swap that stuff out. Um, the other thing is, I mean, it's, it's relatively, you know, rust-free in terms of the remainder of the body. <laughs> what does kind of stink on this is that uh, the most rust-free side where there's absolutely not a spot or a hole, somehow uh, they mangled the quarter or the uh, rocker panel here a little bit, um, which is a bummer, but it's also not, it's not too bad. So that's not crazy to fix, but rust-free side, uh, this one's great. Um, what I did notice too, is that on the other side, the window is a little bit more, it leaks a little bit more. And again, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell because actually the seal itself doesn't look terrible, but when you get water under it, um, you can see that it leaks through. I don't know if the side was just exposed for a little while longer. Again, uh, you know, the, the plates say it was last registered in 08. Um, so this side is a little bit worse. Let's make this a state for a second. It's still not crazy. It's, you know, I would say it's uh, six to eight inches in and about a foot long maybe that needs to be replaced. Um, but they make floor pans for this, so that's not a crazy job. And it doesn't go any farther back. It's just right there. So um, not too crazy. And, you know, the rest of the body is in great shape. The seat obviously has been well worn in the driver's area, um, but the rest of the vinyl is pretty nice. There might be a way just to kind of get that stitched up or, you know, throw a seat cover over it. Same thing, the back jump seats are just, I mean, pristine condition. I love that it's still got the gun rack in the back. Not that uh, we can ride around town anymore with guns in the backs of our trucks, but, uh, you know. Uh, so the other thing, because the driver side got a little bit more water down here. Um, I think that's also where this buildup came from and you've got a little bit of a rust spot uh, in the corner here. Again, it's, this is pretty, uh, this would be pretty easy to cut out and put in a new piece of metal. Uh, so you don't have to replace the whole fender or anything like that. It's nothing structural. It's just the outside. Uh, same thing. This rocker panel is super straight. You've got a little bit of a spot on the door here and just for reference so you can see the size of it it's not too too crazy um, nothing real big couple of spots for something from 1976 it's uh, more than 40 years old it's not too crazy a um, little spot here in the bed as well so I don't know if just the driver side ended up being exposed to the elements um, a little bit more than the passenger side um, I do have the uh, I have the mirrors for it, the original mirrors. Uh, the fella that I picked this up from took them off because he actually did store it inside of his garage and with the mirrors on it, uh, it didn't fit in there. So he, uh, he took them off. Um, new Edelbrock Performer Carb, that thing's working great. We put the air cleaner back on there. Um, needs a little bit of wire looming in the back. And so the fella I picked it up from, uh, his specialty is electrical. Um, so he made sure all of the wire was running properly um, and I know he replaced a couple of things um, in line there and made sure that that was all connected. So this really just needs some wire loom. Um, it is running off of this tank right now, uh, which makes it pretty easy, you know, just make sure the ball's pumped up solid and the thing fires right off. Um, that's obviously not a permanent fix, um, but 
the two tanks under here, they really need to be dropped and cleaned out. And I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. Uh, that back one to me uh, feels plastic. So I don't think that's, that's gonna be much, much of an issue um, in terms of cleaning it out. There shouldn't be rust buildup. And I think that, I can't tell, but it seems like this one, the uh, forward one, is plastic as well. Um, I'm not positive on that. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. I know that seems weird, but it just kind of is hard to tell. Um, I remember when I got this as well, uh, they were doing something around the yard, moving equipment. And I remember them saying something along the lines of, uh, they were setting something down in the bed of it and it touched the bed of the truck. So that is the only part that's got kind of a dent in it. Other than that, the bed's super clean, no rust. Tailgate works awesome. Just, uh, man, everything weighs a lot on this thing. The tailgate is just so beefy. It's cool. I just really like this truck. So, um, you know, I haven't hundred percent decided what to do with this thing. Um, I think we are going to see, uh, if we can get it sold. It's just a really nice truck. And to be honest, to be honest, uh, I just don't have the time right now to, uh, tackle this too. Um, and I do like it. It's something that I would keep if I could, but, uh, I think a better use of my time is focused on the Durango and getting that thing done right now. I really want to take it wheeling. It's been far too long. I've got a load of parts sitting there waiting for me. Um, so clean this thing up. Looks really good. She runs, she drives, brakes work, steering works, uh, engine runs, all the things. Um, and I think uh, it would be really cool in someone else's hands. Um, you know, the couple of things I've thought about with this is it wouldn't be terribly hard to find a uh, beat up, um, even like a second gen club cab long bed. Um, I think the wheelbases are similar. Um, so second generation Dodge. And, you know, I know that the Cummins are going for a lot, but you could go that route. Or you could go, you know, Dodge 2500 gas route and uh, use the 5.9 Magnum that's in it um, and, you know, do a body swap on it and swap this over to it and uh, that would be, I think that would be really cool and, and pretty simple. Um, the other thing is, is you could just tackle this, put in some new floor pans, uh, patch a couple of the spots on the body if you wanted to. It's not even something you really need to do. Um, and get the tanks working. And this thing is a running, driving truck. So, uh, you know, the only thing I would say on the floor pan here, um, the one on the passenger side isn't too bad. Um, as far as getting in and out, this is exactly where you step to get in. So you can kind of feel... Uh, the hole there and you don't want to keep stepping on it. So replacing the floor pan is a no brainer. That's something you do. All right. So that's a wrap on the Dodge. Uh, like I said, you can check this thing out at psfmotorsports.com. I'll put the link down below so you can check that out. I'll also make sure that once it's posted, I share it out across uh, PSF garage. Um, but all the vehicles that we post and we sell, uh, are over at psfmotorsports.com. Um, I'm happy to pass this along to somebody else who can really go to town on it. It's an awesome truck. Um, I really love it. I would love to keep it, but there's too many other things going on and uh, I don't have a parking lot size driveway and that's really where everything is right now. So uh, we're gonna get this thing moving along down the road so that we can focus on the Dodge Durango. And that's really what I wanna focus on right now. I wanna get that thing running and driving. I have a load of parts sitting in the garage right now. Um, the next video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the stuff that I have sitting there and we're gonna start tackling everything that we need to make happen to get that thing running and to get it out to some events. Um, because if you haven't ever been to a Mountain Mafia event in Idaho, Bonners Ferry and up that way, oh my, you gotta make it happen. It's an awesome time, great guys, great events, um, but there's a ton of other stuff too that I wanna get out to. So that's just local here, uh, but there's a ton of parks out here to go to. There's a ton of uh, different events. Um, there's something coming up in November that I'd really like to get to it's a push. It'd probably be a push to get it done by November, but that's the goal right now. So we're going to pass on this. We're going to move it along to somebody else who can do something with it. And we're going to get focused on the Durango. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, make sure you share that down below. I always appreciate feedback. I'd love to hear more from you. Uh, if you have comments about this truck, if there's something that you want to see with it, you know, share that. Let me know. Maybe we can follow the new owner and see what he's up to and maybe get updates on it. Um, 
Other than that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Uh, the Dodge Durango is the next thing up and you don't want to miss any of that because it's going to be pretty awesome. So again, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. Oh, oh, oh.